Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range, very windy day out at the range to talk about a new product from Primary Arms, which is the Gen 2 version of their micro prism or their prism sights. Very popular sights with the original Gen 1s. The Gen 2s bring a lot more to the table, which is what we're going to talk about in today's video. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. And we have some other perks, so there is a link in the video description below. Also, if you enjoy the content, please just take a moment to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Mash that notification bell so you'll be alerted when we post new videos. With all that being said, let's get started today talking about the new micro prisms from Primary Arms. Primary Arms launched two products. One of them is currently available and the other one's still pending. The one that's currently available is the One Power Optic or the 1X. When I say One Power, I mean it's pretty much passed through. There's no magnification. It's a one-to-one. -one. When you look through it, you're not going to see any image distortion. You're not going to see anything magnified. And in some optics, you'll actually see things look smaller through the, through the optic. I've had some Russian optics that were like that. So this is a true pass-through One Power Optic. This one's currently available. It retails at $249.99, so $250. And these are extremely small. Now, with the full riser mount like you see here, it's about 7.6 ounces. Just the optic itself is only 5.5 ounces. It's a very, very small sight. In both of these, I'm going to split this up into a conversation between one versus the other because even though they look the same, there's quite a bit different between these two different optics, this being the 1X, this being the 3X. So let's talk first about the 1X. The 1X has the ACSS reticle in it, but it also has, this particular model has a range finding reticle. So you have bars underneath the chevron with the, the half horseshoe or the horseshoe above it. And those bars will give you ranging data based upon your relationship to the target this little tiny guy has an ocular adjustment back here so you can bring the reticle into sharp focus. If you're used to the Gen 1 versions of these sights, the ACSS reticle was really, really tiny and it was really kind of hard to see under some circumstances. Not the case with the new Gen 2 versions. The ACSS reticle is very pronounced, very easily seen as are the ranging holds, very much improved over the original Gen 1 version. This does have the SLX glass in it but when talking about the One Power sight like this, when looking through it, this thing, the first thing I noticed about it when I first handled them was that this is probably one of the clearest optics I've ever looked through. There's no distortion around the edge, which it shouldn't have because it's a One Power. Uh, there's no color shift whatsoever. And it has a huge field of view. Now the eye relief on this thing, one of the other things that's really cool about this is you can go anywhere from three inches to about six inches away from it with your eye and you can still have a sight picture. Optimally, you'll want to be about three and a half inches away from the sight to have a full view without any vignetting going on with the optic, but it's one of the most forgiving eye boxes you'll ever see. I mean, I can move my head around a lot and I can still see the reticle and the target. That's not something you can do with a lot of sights. This also has 13 uh, different brightness settings. It uses a standard CR2032 battery, which is in this compartment has 13 settings, three of which are night vision, and it is a true daylight visible optic. That means it can be a bright sunny day outside. You can turn this on and with both eyes open, shoot through it and use it just like a red dot sight. If you have astigmatism, sights like this with an etched reticle, that's what this has, will not cause you problems with your astigmatism. With astigmatism, if you don't know what that is, if you're using a red dot sight, instead of seeing a, a truly round ball of a dot, with astigmatism, you're going to see little spikes coming off of it. And sometimes it looks like the dot is smeared. So people with astigmatisms have a real hard time with red dot sights many times. This will cure that for you because you don't have to worry about that. It's also really cool that when you get the sight, see if that'll balance there, in the box, I actually have the FDE box. So this is the FDE model. It's also available in black. But this is the box that it will come in. And inside of the box, you're going to find you have a ton of mounting options. I mean, this is probably one of the most complete sets for an optic I've ever seen. And you have you know, low mounts, medium mounts, high mounts, crane mounts that come back, which I'll show you how it's set up on my Virtus. 
and all of that is inside the box with the owner's manual, some Loctite. Here are all the different mounting options for the flat dark earth sight. I have it on its low mount right now. Actually, there's one more. You have multiple screw lengths, and it also comes with the battery in there and a, a key that will allow you to attach the base to the firearm. So again, everything you need is in the box to get this thing up and running. So, the battery. 2032 has 29,000 hours of battery life at the mid setting. So it has 13 uh, reticle settings. So if you get right around, you know, well, halfway through that, that illumination range, you're gonna get your optimal battery performance at 29,000 hours. But this also has shake, wake, technology in it. So if you turn that reticle on and you lay it down, put it in the gun safe, set it by your bedside, the, the light will turn off. The minute you move that weapon, the light, the illumination kicks back on. So that helps to extend that battery life quite a ways if you like to leave your optics on like many times I'll do with my aim points. It has 120 MOA of adjustment in the elevation and windage. That's a lot of adjustment. Now with the one power, each click is one MOA at 100 yards. This is a CQB sight. And because it has no magnification, shooting this at 300 yards, which you can easily do, you don't really need those little tiny micro adjustments because you're not gonna see enough detail at distance for it to really matter. And this will dovetail into my discussion about the three power sight because that changes. And these also come with the primary arms lifetime warranty. It has the IP67 uh, rating on it, so that means it is waterproof, it's nitrogen filled. They say that they tested these sites with over seven or 8,000 rounds of 308 on a SCAR. Why a SCAR? A SCAR is one of the, is reported to be one of the most abusive rifles out there in terms of demolishing optics. They say they have seven or 8,000 rounds tested uh, with these optics on a SCAR, so that means it can take quite a bit of punishment. It is a completely aluminum housing with an aluminum base, and honestly, when you, when you pick this thing up, look at it, it looks and feels very substantial, even though it weighs only five ounces for the sight, seven ounces with its mount attached, depending on which mounting option you go with. Another thing that's really nice is that it has a Trigicon screw pattern on it, which I'll show you when we talk about my Virtus and the three power version of this optic. You guys may have been able to tell from the audio from the previous segments that today is a extremely windy day. This is the day after uh, the tornadoes ripped through the south and uh, killed a lot of people. And our hearts go out to those down south where that tornado touched down from what I hear and it was on the ground for like 200 miles. Uh, a tremendous loss of life. So our hearts, thoughts and prayers go out to those families and people that have been affected by that. So today is an extremely windy day. Uh, we woke up this morning and it's you know 25 30 mile an hour constant winds with gusts on top of that so i thought well this would be a perfect opportunity and you know, how you can use optics like this for wind holds now i have some challenge targets that out 300 and 350 yards away i'm going to shoot the 350 yard target in this high wind which is coming at an angle like this we're shooting some federal 55 grain american eagle we're going to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition to the channel. So we're going to shoot some 55 grain ball at 300 and we're going to use the reticle and the three power uh, prism sight from primary arms and see if we can score some hits. Hopefully we'll be able to hear those hits because of uh, the wind, which might make those audible impacts a little hard to see. Now one thing I notice when I look through this glass is that it's extremely sharp and clear. There's a little bit of discoloration, like a yellow ring at the very, very edge of my field of view, but it's a sharp, crystal clear image. I can actually see bullet impacts on the target out at 350 yards. So let's go ahead and fire off a few shots here. I know what my elevation is using my ACSS reticle. I'm gonna give it some left wind hold, which is basically holding left side of the target. Definitely heard that one. Hit. 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 Another hit.
Uh, now the wind died off. Came back to the right a little bit. The wind dropped there considerably. Picking up again. Going to hold a little bit more. So, whew, my eyes are watering, guys. The wind is unbelievable. It's only about 30 degrees out there, and yeah. So anyway, optic, really, really clear. Very minimal, if any, color shift that I can see. I can see great detail. The only things that, that I can see with the three by that I don't see with the one power is that slight yellow ring around the very edge once I get my eye right about three and a half inches away from the, the ocular side. But other than that, crystal sharp image, very big, easily seen ACSS reticle, and the elevation wind holds are very easy to use in this sight. So that's why I'm using these on rifles that I shoot the most. It's because they are so easy to use, great clarity, awesome illumination, and an amazingly small form factor. So you will see me using these more and more going forward. And if I break one, I'll let you guys know, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I get asked all the time, Mac, how can I get involved in the firearms industry? Well, there's no easy answer, but one way you can easily get involved in the firearms industry is to become a certified gunsmith. Modern Gun School has been teaching gunsmiths since 1945. It is accredited college, and also if you're a veteran and have a GI Bill, you can use that to enroll at Modern Gun School. So please swing by and check them out. I have a link in the video description below. This is the three power optic next to the one power. And you can tell them apart by the position of the turret towers. So the three power has them forward, the one power has them further to the rear. However, overall size, the three power is only a little bit longer. The diameter is the same. The three power uses the same 2032 reticle, has the same 13 brightness adjustment settings, but instead of being one click equaling one MOA to 100 yards, these are quarter MOA clicks on the three power. Now you have more magnification, so you can see more and make those, those minute adjustments, which you can actually see because of the magnification. People I've seen complain about the one MOA adjustments on the one power, and I really don't have a problem with that on a one power. On a three power, on up, yeah, one MOA would be a bit coarse for that magnification. So you don't have to worry about that with the three powers. I just wanted to get that out there because I've seen the com conversations on the internet. Now the three power optics like this one aren't yet available. They were saying towards the end of the year they would become available. As of today, looking at the Primary Arms website, they're not currently available. I have one of these. A lot of folks in YouTube have these. They've been able to evaluate them. I've been shooting this a lot. You've seen it in past videos. This is my primary rifle uh, that I use, one of. I mean, this, this thing is probably the most used. And I put this optic on it because I really started to fall in love with the optic itself. Now you'll notice I have it setting back using the crane mount and it comes over my Griffin Armament backup sights. And you're gonna say, well, that's dumb. How are you gonna deploy your sights? Well, first of all, you wouldn't be able to use your sights through it, a prism optic, it's not going to work. But because it has a Trigicon mount, this is what I mentioned in the previous segment, I can use Trigicon accessories like this quick detach mounting system. So I can get rid of this if I break it or get it covered in mud and then go to my iron sights. You'll oftentimes hear me say in past videos that I, if I use an optic, I, I really, really want a quick detach mount on it for that very reason. So that's how I have it set up. So that means, again, you can use any of those accessories out there that are commonly avail available for Trigicon optics. Has the adjustable ocular lens. This one has a different type of ACSS reticle in it. It actually has holes in it. The different types of reticles that might be available with this particular site, I don't know. Again, it's not yet listed as for sale on their website. I don't even have pricing information on it yet, but I just want to let you guys know that it's coming. Now, something else that's interesting, 
This is the new Gen 2 Spitfire Vortex prism sight. This is a three power sight, much like this one. I picked this one up. Uh, I, I wanna say I ordered off Primary Arms website uh, I picked this one up because when it's time, when these actually become available, this might be a pre-release model. It might have some things change on the, the actual production versions. I don't know. That's why I'm not making a direct comparison in today's video. But when we do make the comparison, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what the Spitfire 3x looks like in comparison to the new Primary Arms Micro Prism 3x. So you can see that the Spitfire is considerably larger and it's noticeably heavier. It's a much more substantial sight. With regards to this, it's also illuminated. It has push buttons on the side versus a dial. I'm a dial kind of guy. I like that tactile feeling. Uh, the buttons I don't like because you can put them in a case. They can get pushed and turn your sight on. Uh, this does not have shake to wake technology, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal with the primary arms if it did get turned on with buttons, but it doesn't have buttons. With this, you could kill your battery pretty easily just by accidentally pushing the button in the case. But we'll talk more about this in the future and compare it directly to this optic when that time comes, when these are actually available on the US market. I just wanted to let you guys know that I will be making the comparison because I've had people that have seen me with this saying, well, how does it compare to the, the, the Vortec optic? We'll get to that when it's time. I don't have the one power version of it to do a comparison to the one power version. So there you go, there's the three by sight. I think it's really, really cool. I love this crane mount system. If you don't like it, you can just put it on regular vertical mounts. Again, all that stuff is in the box and very, very durable. I mean, when you, when you play with this thing, you're gonna get the sense that this thing is built like a tank. And that form factor is just absolutely amazing. It really, really flips my switch. I love this sight, I think. Primary Arms is gonna sell an awful lot of these. I've always liked the concept of prism sights because of the etched reticle, but until this new micro prism came out, I always opted to put a red dot sight on my firearms that I used most often. It's just because of the form factor, they're generally lighter, smaller, handier than the prism sights that were currently on the market. Well, now that this new one power Cyclops is available on the market, you'll notice I'm starting to put them on all sorts of different firearms and pulling off those red dot sights. This little one power optic has amazing clarity, very durable construction in terms of it's all aluminum housing, things like that. I, I mean, it, it's just really changed the way that I look at optics for firearms that I use most frequently. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, learning more about the new one by and three by prism optics from Primary Arms. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can ask those questions down below in the comments section. If you would like to support us here at the Military Arms channel, best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization, there's a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.